So as we're looking at it, because that kind of draws our eyes, we're like, oh, that's kind of odd. We look down, and uh, the Wizzo in the other airplane comes up and says, hey, Skipper, do you? And that's about what he gets out of his mouth, and I'm kind of looking at the same thing. I go, dude, do you see that? What is that thing? And what we see is this white tic-tac-looking object just above the surface of the water, pointing north-south, and it's going north-south, east-west. It's just radically moving forward, back, left, right, at will. And it's moving around the disturbance, the, the white water that we see. That was Commander David Fravor talking about his eyes-on experience of the famous Tic Tac back in November 2004. This video, I will go through and recreate that engagement using old-school fighter pilot techniques and some new-school editing to try and put you in the seat of that F-18 Super Hornet that day when Commander Fravor saw and engaged the Tic Tac for several minutes. Please smash that like button if you like this content. Subscribe for future notifications of videos. I try and publish a video every Friday. Thanks as always to my patrons. I love you guys. Thanks for all the support. If you want to support the channel, join the team, go to patreon.com forward slash Chris Lato. Now onto the video. For this video, I went in depth on three main interviews that David Fravor did with Joe Rogan, uh, Lex Fridman, and the Fighter Pilot Podcast. For this, for this video, I use primarily Joe Rogan's interview. I think he goes into the most detail on the actual engagement. So for that interview, what does he explain is November 14th is when the actual event happened. Where were they? They were out off the coast of San Diego. So he says, if you draw a line between San Diego and Ensenada, Mexico, halfway, 60 miles out is where they were, okay? So if I overlay that over the airspace, okay? So this is the airspace they were using, Whiskey 291. I go over this in, a, in another video I did on the Tic Tac, if you wanna check that out. So this is San Clement Island. Okay, if you draw a line south of San Clement Island, the ranges are a little bit off. Basically, it puts you right in the middle of this area, okay? So in my last video on the Tic Tac, I thought they'd be operating in this Fleta Hot area because they're integrating a lot of assets. So Fravor explains they're doing ship defense. Okay, so if we look at the airspace here, what do I think they're doing? Okay, I think they have their carrier set up here. Okay, air defense exercise means defend the carrier. So I was in the Air Force for 20 years, US Air Force flying F-16s, so I'm not hugely knowledgeable on the Navy. Okay, but I have led uh, several exercises, let's say five or six exercises against and with ships, coordinating their defense and coordinating for their sinking as well. So just based on that, I'm gonna make speculation here on what I think the engagement actually set up was. So he, Fravor explains in his interview with Joe Rogan that they're 40 miles south is their blue cap, okay? How do you, why do you make all these ranges? You go off of the threat. So in this case, they're defending the carrier. So I'm guessing it's against some sort of exoset anti-ship type missile. So you look at what is the capabilities of those missiles and how are they delivered? It's probably out to some range, 20, 30 miles. Uh, is just a ballpark guess. This is how it's set up. What's the other key thing? So David Fravor just takes over the squadron. He was Top Gun graduate. Being a squadron commander and leading a squadron into war is the warrior etho dream of a fighter pilot, being a fighter pilot. So, David Fravor, at this point in his life, is on top of his game. He must be one of the best pilots at that point, at that time, in the world. Has to be. He has to be one of the best, just based on the amount of training that's gone into him, the amount of pressure, how much work and effort it takes to get to that point. So he's taking over the squadron, extremely overtasked, and now he's leading this first mission. So they haven't been on the ship for two weeks. The ships have been out here already. The Princeton is also involved in air defense. Okay, is out here working for at least two weeks and they've been tracking these things on the radar. This is the first time any jets have actually flown. So Fravor shows up, he's planning this mission with Dietrich. So Lieutenant Dietrich at the time, Alex Dietrich, she was new to the squadron. He's just training her up probably, she probably hasn't done a lot of ship engagement. She probably hasn't taken off or landed on a ship in a while. So they're spinning her up on that as well. And now they're also integrating the Princeton. So the Princeton is a key player in this exercise. So the Princeton will have zones breaking out, broken out in here as well, where there will be different agreements with how they are going to coordinate with each other, how they're going to defend the carrier, right? Everything's about defending the carrier. So that's the basic engagement. The Red Air is flown by the Marine commander. So Kurth and his wingman is out here. And then 
Fravor is there with Dietrich. So it's only a four ship. This is not a large mission. Okay, It does have the Princeton, right? So that, that's a lot of assets if you think about it. Uh, but as far as the air component of this, it's just four aircraft, pretty light. Hornets, the red air, they take off first. Okay, so they're gonna take off. And this is how we talk about flying. Okay, we draw a little, this is uh, the flight lead and this is the wingman. Okay, and they're gonna take off first because they have much further to fly, right? So this is 100 miles from the carrier at eight miles a minute, you know, it's gonna take them 15 minutes to get here and get set up. So they're gonna take off 10 to 15 minutes earlier uh, than Fravor. Okay, so they're down here. They end up back, uh, they're in their cap. Fravor launches with his wingman. And they're traveling these 40 miles to get to the cap while they're en route. Okay, so while they're, they're traveling to their cap or soon after takeoff, Fravor explains they get kind of a weird call. Do you have any ordnance? Say your ordnance on board from the controllers. This is a weird, I mean, they're on a training mission. It should be obvious they don't have any, any ordnance on board. So basically they say, yeah, we're here. And they get a vector out to the west. So 270, let's listen to that now on the Joe Rogan podcast. Hey, we're off the coast of Mexico. Real world vector. We have no idea what we're going to look at. Probably drug runner because you get the mm. drug runners coming up the coast. So we're like, okay. So we drive out and the, they're calling down ranges. So they're telling us, hey, it's 270 at 30 miles at 20,000 feet. And it's, you know, and then you just count down the ranges. And we're talking back and forth the whole time. So they got to a point where they say, hey, merge plot. So they call merge plot. And so the other jet is on my left hand side. Um, and we're going to, I'm going to go to a clock code to make it simple. So the object we're going to end up looking for is in, right in the middle of the clock. And we are at the six o'clock position. And my wingman is off to my left side, so it's she's further down with her wisdom. So as we're looking around, we we look to the right, and there's a. It's, it was pretty, yesterday was a perfect example out here. The water is perfectly calm, no white caps. I mean, it's literally a perfect San Diego, California day. And we see white water, something like if you see a seamount, you know, rock underwater when you're standing on the shore, and the waves are breaking over, it and you're like, what is that? It's usually because there's a rock under the water. So it looks like that, but it's about the size of a 737. It actually kind of has a shape of like a cross, and it's pointing to the east. So you've got the long part going east-west, and you got a couple of things going north and south. Okay, so he gets a vector out to the west. So what is that? They say go 270, 60 miles. And he later says 20,000 feet. He does add in an altitude there. So 270 heading uh, for 60 miles. Okay, I drew it out here on Google Earth. If you look... So 27060 puts you just kind of southeast uh, of this San Nicolas Island. So if we draw a line straight down from San Nicolas Island, we get a general location out here. Okay, somewhere in this area. We don't know exactly when he, he took the vector. Calling down ranges. Okay, so he's searching on his radar. They're searching on his wingman's radar. Okay, his wingman's off to the south here on the left side. Uh, and he's trying to pick up a contact as they're approaching this. So, you know, until you call targeted, controllers are going to continue to call out the raw information. So where's the target? And they just keep saying 270, 30 miles, 20,000 feet, 270, 20. Okay, so they just get closer and they're just marching down. Okay, what's the Red Air doing? I think Red Air hears this as well because they canceled training. And I think Red Air is also coming over, right? And they later say... Actually, at the end of the engagement, I read in a article that Lieutenant Colonel Kurth saw the cross of water on the ground and saw it actually disappear, he said, rather suddenly. He didn't see the tic-tac. He was up higher on a different frequency. So as we're looking at it, because that kind of draws our eyes, we're like, oh, that's kind of odd. We look down and uh, the Wizzo in the other airplane comes up and says, hey, Skipper, do you? And that's about what he gets out of his mouth. And I'm kind of looking at the same thing. I go, dude, do you see that? What is that thing? And what we see is this white tic-tac looking object just above the surface of the water pointing north south and it's going north south east west it's just radically moving forward back left right at will and it's moving around the disturbance the the white water that we see how big is this thing so, uh, over time it's about 40 feet long and the way i estimate that is i mean i got a lot of time fighting other airplanes so it's about about the size of a hornet fuselage so that's what you say 40 feet and this thing's just going left so the first thing you see when you look down you go and this is with our eyes, it's not sensors, right? So we're looking down at this thing, and first thing you think is helicopter, right? They're, they, they, the helicopters typically stay below 200 feet when we're out there and they're just driving around. We're, we're pretty far away from the ship for a helicopter for one of ours. 
So what is it? So the first thing you look for is rotor wash. You know, if you've watched any TV show that starts kicking the water up, and you can see that. It's really easy to see from the air. So we're like, huh, no rotor wash. Matter of fact, don't see any rotors. Don't see any tail rotor. Don't see any, you know, the main rotors. We're like, that's kind of weird. So as we're driving around, we're looking at this thing. We get to about the 9 o'clock position. How far away are you from this thing? I'm at 20,000 feet, and it's right down on the surface, right off our right side. So I'm probably maybe a couple miles lateral and 20,000 feet, and we're just watching it move around. Fighter pilot techniques. So what I have here is this is the starting position. Two centimeters I measured on my little paper is one nautical mile. Okay, this is uh, Fravor. He's in the lead with his back seater. We don't know. Uh, this is Dietrich's aircraft. Uh, and her back seat is Commander Slate. And I think he's actually running the show from the back seat of the other aircraft. I mean, she's flying, but he's also looking outside, I'm sure. Base at an airspeed of 0.6 Mach, which they all have been flying all the other engagements. That is six miles a minute. So that's a one mile every 10 seconds. So it'll be two centimeters every 10 seconds. Okay, so that's how we measure it up. So they're flying straight here, still looking for it. And then he says off the right side. So off the right side, they look down and they see some interesting appearance in the water. And I think this is what it would have looked like. You see, even though it matches the white of the background here, I just used a straight white to color that in. He's about three miles away, he's 20,000 feet, but your eyes can see that movement. I think it would look much like this. So it's very small in your eyes? Um, not overly small. I mean, an airplane down that low, it's 40 feet, you, can, you can see, see it. pretty well. well with, it was pretty clear. So I'm like, okay. So I said, I'm gonna go check it out. That's what we're trained to do. The other pilot says, hey, I'm going to stay up here. And I'm like, that's perfect. So now we'll, we'll get some separation. We'll get it from different views. And the other airplane will I kind of have a God's eye view of everything that's going on as I go down and check this thing out. So I start driving around, and it's still doing its forward, back, left, right. It's still pointing north-south. We get to about the 12 o'clock position. I'm just in a nice, easy descent. So I got this nice, easy descent. I get to about 12 o'clock, and as I'm coming down, you know, I, yeah, I could guess probably about, you know, 18,000 feet now, a couple thousand feet below the other airplane the tic-tac just kind of rapidly goes boop and turns so now it's kind of pointing east west and now it mirrors us so it's above the surface we're up high we're coming down it starts coming up I'm like, well this is getting interesting so we kind of drive all the way around a circle i'm descending it's coming up and i get over to about the eight o'clock position of the on the clock and it's over at about the two o'clock position well the quickest way as we know as kids to get someone you know you can keep going around the circle and nothing's going to happen you cut across the circle so I'm about, I don't know, probably two to 3,000 feet above it, and I just kind of drop my nose aggressively, and I cut across the circle, and it's coming this way. It's because I'm trying to fly to where it's going to be because I want to mm. join on it. I want to see how close I can get to it. Right. And as I'm pulling up, it's kind of starting to cross my nose, and it starts to accelerate, and within about less than a second, as I start to pull nose onto it and it crosses right in front of me, it just goes poof, and it's gone. So what does that look like from above? So he's at that 12 o'clock position. He descends, it starts climbing, mirroring, 30 seconds go by. Now he's still coming around. He's flying on the opposite side of the circle. Okay, so they're just on the opposite side of the circle. He decides, I'm gonna cut across. So he cuts across, it's called a low yo-yo. Cuts across the circle to try and get pointed at it, right? This is how you would do a guns attack. Goes across the circle, the wingman stays up high and points at it, okay? So here you can measure it gets within 3,000 feet. 3,000 feet is quite close in aircraft terms. If you're at an airport and you just look out the window at a airliner taxiing by, so not even as far away as the runway, that's probably 3,000 feet away. You know, you can see clear details. You can see people probably in the windows. So 3,000 feet, you get quite a bit of detail and that's where he sees it just poof, disappear. He's, it's probably aiming to the west at this point. So interesting what happens next. So I call the other airplane and I said, hey, do you guys, you guys see that thing? And they're like, sir, it's gone. We don't, we don't see it at all. So I'm like, okay, that's kind of weird. So we, we don't see it, we're looking. At the same time, I say, hey, let's turn around and let's go back to see what was in the water. You know, there's, was there something there? So we turn around, we're right there. We haven't gone anywhere. It's gone. Water's perfectly, there's no white water, nothing. It's just blue. I'm like, okay. So we turn back around, now we're heading back out towards the east, and I tell the controller, I said, well, I said, uh, you know, I first said, I'm kind of weirded out, and I told my, my backseater that. And we start heading back, and the, the controller on the Princeton comes up and he says, sir, you're not going to believe this, but that thing is back at your cap point. That was our original point where we were going to hold 40 miles south of the ship. So this thing has went from wherever we were at to, you know, about 60 miles in 
you know, maybe 30, 40 seconds. It's already over there. And it just – and they didn't track it. It just appeared. He just it shows back up on the radar and they go, it's here. So we're like, okay. So we fly back. We don't see it. We don't see it on our radar. We don't see it on any of our sensors. We do like two runs and we come back to the ship and land. Woo! So here, I think they, are, they ended up engaging it somewhere over here just based on how it works. So he can't see what's going on behind him. Turns around, well, let's go check out the other place. They look everywhere. It's just clear water. Nothing to see here. Also, Lieutenant Colonel Kurth, the Marine commander, he was up high, he mentions in another, on another article. He was up high on a different frequency and he noticed the actual white breakwater, if you call it the cross, just disappear. That went away quite quickly, he said. Favor mentions they go all the way back. Okay, so they fly back to the cap. And the whole time they're searching again in the radars for this thing and they, and they never saw it again, they said. They do two runs, so they do two actual air defense exercise practices against these red air and then they come back and land. And that's the famous Tic Tac engagement. He gets back to the ship, checks with the other guys. He's not crazy. Yes, everybody did in fact see what he saw. Talks to Chad Underwood, tells him about the Tic Tac, their engagement. And Chad Underwood says, I'm gonna go get a video that he did and that is the famous FLIR 1 video. So that was the mission, at least best I could recreate it. That was David Fravor's amazing account. Thanks so much to David Fravor, Alex Dietrich, Slate, Kurth, Kevin Day, Gary Voorhees, anyone else I have missed. I'm surely you have missed somebody. Thank you guys so much for speaking out on this. I know it's difficult. We all really appreciate it. Smash that like button. If you do like this content, it helps the algorithm. Remember to subscribe. If you want to support the channel, go to patreon.com. The only way I make money for the channel is through YouTube advertising or Patreon. So thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. Peace.